Uh, next slide, please. Which would help if I could slide. Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Perfect. There we go. Okay, let me go from here. So, what is Rise Up and why Rise Up? Rise Up with service now and why now? Industry studies and listening to the voice of our customers has shown us that jobs are changing. It's something that is evolving over time. For example, we currently have the demand for UX designers simply because the product does evolve to a point where we use more and more apps and more and more workspaces, which is something that wasn't around in the past. So jobs are changing, but also skills are changing. More and more features on the platform and the product getting released where well, we're changing from heavily scripting towards more and more business context articulation using the flow designers. So also the skills are changing and also candidates are different. Maybe everyone learns in a different matter. Someone prefers only demand things. Um, someone prefers reading an article versus watching a video or listening to, to information. Some people do refer prefer instructor-led courses. So really there's a lot of change going on and that is something we try to embed within the Rise Up framework. Next slide, please. Um, what we have here is really the first thing I like to talk about is the circle on the left side where we have, in the past, we've been relying on the success for the platform purely on the platform. We evolved to a point where we said, okay, the success of the platform is not just platform, it's platform and people. But the more and more we did researches internally, we found out that our most successful customers are those customers who do not only focus on platform and process, but also focus on skilled individuals because those individuals are in the end, the ones that will run the platform, use the platform or maintain the platform. And with Rise Up with ServiceNow, we um, like to skill up a million people by the end of 2024. And that is because digital transformation requires the talent information. You need the right people with the right skills in the right roles. And Rise Up with ServiceNow is the framework to do that. And one introduction we do have with Rise Up is our career journeys. Next slide, please. So what are the career journeys? First of all, the career journeys can be accessed in now learning. They got introduced right at Knowledge, so in May this year. And what it is, it is a holistic view of a learning path, a career journey, um, where you can see based on a career journey you like to go, which trainings do I personally have to go through to go, for example, from an associate level towards a professional level, and that can be for various roles. And it does not only include, for example, the trainings that are, that are part of the career journey for the role itself. But what it's nice about it, this is also, like it explains what the role itself does. We have explanation on what you do in your role or could do in the role, but also we have like a, a day of a life in this example, for example, a business analyst. There is a five minute video of a business process analyst sharing five mi mi minutes with you, exploring his day as a business analyst. So you don't only get insights from a training perspective, but you also get an understanding of what those roles that we have within the career journeys are supposed to do. Um, next slide, please. So what career journeys do we have? In wave one, we currently have a career journey for system administrators, uh, also starting with associate business, system administrator, business system administrator, professional system administrator. So we always have the leveling within each of those career journeys. And we have that for sysadmins, application developer, we have it for the implementer, we have it for the business process analyst, and also for the technical project manager. So we do have a wide variety of roles within the career journeys. We do not just focus on technical people, 
we also consider business process, technical project managers. So really trying to cover each and every perspective we need on a successful product to run um, within the career journeys. Next slide, please. Oh yeah, where can you find the career journeys? So you have a direct link to the career journeys on our official.com site, on community, and on our now learning homepage. Okay, yep. And then you see the career journeys tab in now learning in the left up corner. And then you can get direct links to each and every journey page. And you could also get a recommendation. The link to the .com page is in the chat. It was just posted so you can access it there and you can walk your way to now learning to access the career journeys. Yep. This is the perspective in now learning itself. So you will be confronted with the, now, uh, with the career journeys as soon as you open now learning you see the five career journeys that we just talked about. The system administrator, business, business process analyst, project manager. And you can also start two career journeys in parallel. So it's not just because you started one career journey, you cannot start any other career journey. That's not the case. You can also have two career journeys active at a time. You will also see in which formats the trainings are um, whenever you see the holistic view of all the trainings that are part of your career journey directly in now learning. To so go through them, it, you do not have to find them in now learning. You also need a now learning account to actually start your career journey. Next slide. And well, that's that, perfect. I hand it over to you, Alfred. Well, you know, before we go to, to my part, which is going to do a little bit more in depth, Let's see if there's some questions from from the the um, the viewers, the attendees, um, in regard to what Max has uh, just presented. Uh, Max, can you can you do the Q and A? Can you see it there? The questions, or do I need to do I need to? Uh, I found it. Yeah. How is an implementer different than a developer? Is the first question I see in the Q and A panel. My my view on that, the developer is more someone who is directly someone working on a specific application and trying to get that application at itself developed, maybe has its requirements, has its stories, but what he's working with. Whereas an implementer would also have for example, requirement workshops. So implementer is more trying to gather the requirements, may also be part on getting the, the solution built, but more or less the implementer is handing over the most technical or scripting heavy part towards the developer. So I would say the implementer is less technical than the developer. <clears throat> Does one have to be in admin first to become an app developer next? Good question, absolutely. So um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily that you are a system administrator before you become an app developer. You could start your career journey just as an app developer, but you would also have some training courses, which are the same training courses that are part of the career journeys for the administrator, because they kind of do sometimes need to know um, similar things. So maybe I'm, I'm throwing up terms here, like working with update sets or how do I move things from one instance to the other? Both may need to know that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that an app developer has to be an admin first. He can just be an app developer. Um, by its own. Well, I hope that answers your question. Mm, what kinds of training do you offer for executive level leadership? I need to know what kind of goals 
I need to set in my organization so I can guide my team. Um, actually, the first uh, Max, thing... I can answer that in my, in my next section. Okay, then I keep that for office next session. Let's see what other questions we got. Uh, what is the current timeline for future waves of career paths? And is there any idea of what future paths may look like? I do know that wave two is currently work in progress. I can't tell you from the back of my head which paths are included, but there are definitely work in progress. But I would have come back to you and confirm like which path career journeys and what dates we currently have in mind. I don't know if you know better than I do offer, but I don't have the exact timeline in the present. You no, know, I don't have anything to add on that. Okay. Um, These are great next question. So thank you, everyone. That's a lot. I still can scroll <laughs> down. <laughs> so can you be a developer with no application development experience? Uh, I can tell you that from my personal experience. When I started my service no career, I started uh, within the app development space and I had no app development experience. And it, I would say it worked out quite well. What you need to understand is like JavaScript and scripting itself. Um, but you do not necessarily have to have the scripting experience like prior, previously. I wouldn't say it's a must. It's a nice to have and it's good to have, but not a must though. Mm -hmm. Let's do one or two more, Max, and then we can yes. move on. But that's, this is great. I like the interactivity. Uh, that's the previous um, ongoing training or career journeys gets discounted with the new trainings. Uh, not that I am aware of, um, and I don't think so. Do you have any different information, Alfred? You know, I'll, I'll address some of that. But um, as you know, or as the, um, the participants may know, is that we do version upgrades about every six months. Um, so there are... Um, we do release new training that matches up with that new version. So in other words, there may be, as, as an example, I'll, I'll make a class uh, or talk about a class called ServiceNow Administration Fundamentals, right? There's, there was the uh, there was the Rome class for that. But then we also released Utah. There was a Utah class. So while the the class may change a little based on the version um, the, the typical paths remain similar, but ServiceNow is a dynamic organization and we're always updating and changing and doing best practices. So there may be changes in the, in the career paths. And let's do, okay. let's do one more. I would say we move forward to your part, given, given the time. Sure. That'll be fine. And, um, there we go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, who needs training. I think that's um, a great place to begin the discussion because while training is important and enablement and education are something we all should strive for, it really depends on your role of what kind of training um, and how much each individual should take. So I want to focus on the, the center image here, if you could, where it says, who needs training? Let's start at the bottom of the, uh, of the image, the, the columns, where it talks about the technical user. And if you can see on the right of that, it talks about the most training. Right. So let me tell you, and I know there was a little discussion earlier about implementer versus developer, um, and that was a great question. And we see both of those as technical users, okay? So a technical user for, uh, for our standpoint is someone who's responsible for the administration, the maintenance, or the implementation of ServiceNow, right? So these are the people that, have, that need a deep knowledge of ServiceNow and the modules and solutions that we offer. So for these types of people, um, what we what we do for them is really is is a lot of classes um, spread across. Some of them are instructor led, where you actually have one instructor to sixteen students. 
So you get that inter interactivity, you get the ability to ask questions and go deeper into topics. Those classes are typically two or three days in length, those instructor led. And like I said, you get to kind of know other people in your group, they're public classes. Um, although we also have private if you have a large group is in uh, yourself. But typically you're in there with people from other organizations and we're talking about best practices and going into detail about um, a wide variety of topics. Um, upon completion of classes for these technical users, um, the students can actually earn certifications. So you may have heard of things like a certified ServiceNow administrator or a certified application developer. These are all certifications that can be achieved upon completion of classes as well as an exam. Um, so for these technical users, once again, it's a combination. Um, we talked about the instructor led. We have, if you see on the bottom, uh, the bottom right, um, approximately 35 or so instructor led classes. We have more than 300 on demand, which are videos that you can take, um, videos and, and digital format, which you can take at your leisure. Um, and of those, about 275 or more are actually free. These these on-demand courses, some of them are 10 minutes long, some of them are 10 hours long. So it really depends on the class, um, but we talked about these are all part of that, of that journey, that training path um, that, that Max had mentioned. And that's all about the technical user. As we move up, um, we, we start talking about more about these business users, process users, and even the executive sponsors. Um, we, have, uh, we have classes and courses available for everyone. So for the process user, those are oftentimes you think of them as fulfillers, help desk, HR business partners. It really depends on the, the organization and what you call those. But these are the people that are using ServiceNow in their daily work. Right, they're not responsible for the admin. They're not implementing or developing. These are the users, right? So for this group, we we don't want to say you need to take, um, you know, thirty nine hours of classes just to be able to do your job. But what we do have is a is an amazing set. It's called our custom process user training, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in more detail um, towards the end of the presentation. But this is, this is training that's very specific to your organization. Um, it, it actually uses your workflows and your screenshots. Well, we provide how-to training on using ServiceNow. The great part about this is it really focuses on user adoption and your customer satisfaction. When I say customer satisfaction, it, that's your customers, right? That's your, or when I say customers, your users. So you want your users to really like service now um, and have great user adoption so you can get the benefits and the ROI that we talked about early in the cycle. So that's kind of a difference between those technical users and those process users. The process user training, typically an hour, hour and a half, really focused on allowing people to do to learn how to use ServiceNow within your organization. I, I do want to point out also about the, the executive stakeholders. There was a question earlier about that. We do have things for those as well. We have a great class um, for adopting a product uh, platform owner's mindset. So that's a, a, um, a class that is interactive and is uh, instructor-led. That's a great um, class for uh, executives. Um, we also have uh, a video, and I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, um, called Welcome to Service Now. That's for those people that want to get a high-level understanding, but don't need to go into the details of, you know, of how Service Now works and all the details about that. Okay. Um, feel free to put stuff in the, the Q&A if you do have questions. 
Um, but we're going to go on to the next. Figure out how to work this. There we go. Um, we talked about that those classes that are available, the um, instructional ed and the on-demand videos. Um, those are all available on our portal called Now Learning. Uh, and, and Max did mention this, and this is where some of that rise up information is as well. But this, this is where all those classes are listed. And you can see both the instructional ed, the self-paced on demand, and really gives even summaries um, and, and quick overviews of each class. Um, if you wanted more detailed information about classes, talk to your ServiceNow representative, whether it's an account executive, a services account executive, or someone focused on training like myself. And we can also provide detailed uh, syllabi for um, all of our instructional method classes. So we're happy to provide that um, detailed information that is available. Okay, I wanted to show this as a um, just as a sample, uh, the most common certification and the most common path that we hear is all around the system admins, right? Um, every organization should have a, a ServiceNow system admin. And so here is a typical path. It doesn't mean that it is um, required for your specific organization, but once again, your team at ServiceNow can help um, clarify, but I wanted to show this just to show you the path and the certification options that are available. Um, you'll notice the first class there is the Welcome to Service Now. Um, the you're going to see that on all of them. I'm going to show you a couple of different ones, but that's really that's a free on-demand course that we recommend for everyone. It's three hours long. And it really goes into a great deal and to give you a really strong overview of ServiceNow and how we can work in your organization. It's not a sales tool. It really is a from a training and enablement to give you that overview that you really need. And that's a, that's a great one to start with. From there, you can move on um, to the class I mentioned earlier, uh, ServiceNow Administration Fundamentals. That's offered as a three-day instructor-led class or as a video. I think the video is about 15 hours. Don't worry. You don't have to watch it all at one time. You can watch it over um, several days or several weeks, and you can take it the course that way. Max mentioned that learners have different – some learners prefer to do it on their own. Some like the uh, ability to ask questions and work with the team. So you, we do have those options. Um, the great thing about the on-demand uh, courses is that once you um, acquire them, you can actually watch the videos uh, over and over. You actually have about a year to actually um, have that. So it's, a, it's not necessarily a one-time thing. You can go and, and do it, um, addition, watch it as many times as you'd like. Um, and then upon the completion, that next thing there, that's CSA. That's that certification I talked about. Uh, the certification is a great way to kind of show the world that, yes, you did learn what was in that class and you have the knowledge uh, needed to really represent and, and work on ServiceNow to the best of your ability. So that certification is great. Um, it does, um, it follows you. Uh, so it's with the individual. Um, and so you have the ability to, to kind of strengthen your personal um, skill set with a certified uh, certification from ServiceNow. And one, one of the other things I want to show, and I'm not going to go into all of these classes, but these recommended and all these classes you see where they just say on demand, those are available at no charge. And I did I mentioned earlier there was probably 275 plus free on demand courses. And these are great classes like automated test framework, um, how to do upgrades with ServiceNow upgrade essentials. Performance analytics essentials is another wonderful one. So all of these things you see that say on demand, um, and typically these are the smaller classes, they're not gonna be 10 hours, they may be 15 minutes or three hours or five hours, 
but I did want to show that those are available um, for you um, on demand. Um, here, just to give you a, an additional view, this is for an ITSM path. I'm not going to go into all the classes, but I want to show you to the left. It still starts with that welcome to ServiceNow and that ServiceNow administration fundamentals. So those are kind of core classes that we believe that everyone that's doing technical work should take. And like I said, if you're an executive or you're more on the business side, just focus on that welcome to service now. But if you are doing implementation or development, you're gonna want that, that stronger technical side. But this you can see here is, let's say there's 20 classes here. Once again, you don't have to take them all in the first three months. ServiceNow learning and enablement is a journey. And we want you to have things that you can do now and then in the next three to six months and then the next six to 12 months. So you have a path here that you can earn certifications. And it, this is a great way just to visually see that. And I'm gonna show you one more is um, an, another one similar. This is for HR, employee workflows. Once again, you can see the classes on the left are very similar. The welcome to service now, the, the get started with now create. Those are kind of the um, standards and then it goes into the specifics. We do like to teach you on the platform first, as you can see to the left of the bar. Uh, and then of course you go into the details uh, in regard to um, the actual module such as employee workflows or ITSM. Everything to the right of the bar is specific to the functionality and module you're working with, and to the left is the platform. I am going to um, I'm going to do one more uh, around development because this is another very popular one, uh, and then we're also going to do some questions. But um, for a developer, once again, welcome to service now on the on the far left, and then there's a tree depending on how, what type of development you're doing. You know, are you a citizen developer where you're doing low code, no code? Uh, we have an amazing solution uh, with that. Um, there's classes for that all at no charge, which is nice at this point, you can see it's on demand. You can earn micro certifications, which are smaller certifications. Um, there's no charge um, for those. And, um, and that's a great way to go. If you're doing more kind of uh, uh, more development, uh, you can and want to go towards your certification for CAD, the certified application developer, there are classes that are available, scripting and service now and application development fundamentals, both great classes that lead to a, a certification. Okay. I am going to take a 30 second break and just take a look at some of these questions to see if I can address them. Then I'm going to go back to the presentation and maybe even get a sip of water. Hold on for one second. Okay. Gotcha. So one of the questions talked about vouchers. I see a couple of questions in here about vouchers, um, which is great. Thanks for asking those. Um, vouchers are um, are given, or let's say, are available, would be a better word, um, upon completion of certain classes that lead to a certification. Uh, the certifications are not free. Um, someone mentioned uh, in, in the chat or in the question and answer about a $300 charge. Um, so depending on your organization um, and what um, certain what um, things are enabled or what they have, um, there is a charge for the certification. So the certifications are not available at are not at no charge, um, but we have an amazing solution called Impact, which many of you are familiar with. And with Impact, certifications are available and that fee is waived. That is included in your Impact solution. We have different levels of Impact guided, advanced, and total. Um, and each one has a little bit different um, aspect of that. But yes, there are charges for those certifications. Um, I do wanna point out as well, uh, 
is there even there is also an annual maintenance so you can keep those certifications um, with that annual maintenance you get to take the exam uh, on each version so you may I mentioned before that we switch versions every six months or so so once again the idea is that you would take a smaller uh, we call it a delta exam to be able to get that certification and then take it as the new uh, version comes out so you're that way your certification is up to date and you are not just you know certified on a version from two and a half years ago you would be certified on the latest version so that's called the delta exams perfect all right let's go to the next slide and I want to talk, I did mention about that process user training. And I do want to cover this um, because I think this is an exciting part and a really valuable and beneficial type of training that is often overlooked when we talk, when customers are thinking about the training they need, right? A lot of customers and most of our customers are doing some form of that technical training, but they're not all thinking about that process user. And I always tell people, you could develop the best application, the, you know, the most sophisticated, best integrations, looks amazing. But if your customers or your team is not using ServiceNow, that amazing application is not really going to deliver the benefit that, that we all want and, and deserve. So what our process user training does is it really helps improve that user adoption, right? So this is where we're going to be sitting down with your team, uh, with your implementation team. If it's a partner, we sit with them. If it's ServiceNow uh, doing implementations, we work with that team. And if it's self-implemented, we'll work with your team. But we really sit down and develop and create a custom training solution for you. Um, we do a custom development, uh, custom content, right? So we're all going to use, we're going to use your words, your phrases, your images. So that way, when people take the training, they're going to, it's going to be the exact same thing they're going to, they're going to be using in their daily work. Um, the nice thing about this is we can do a train the trainer approach where we train maybe 10 or so of your trainers, and then they can go out and train, you know, the hundreds or the thousands of people that are using ServiceNow at your organization, or we can train about 60 users in a single day. We do it in about three classes of 20 to 25, and we can provide that end user, that training for your process users or fulfillers. But that training is comprised of, uh, a, like I said, that custom content, which I mentioned. Um, we also can do recorded demo videos and what's great about these, once again, these are custom. So these are videos of your application using your workflows, your instance, your screenshots. We're not doing this some generic best of practice video. This is a video how to use ServiceNow, whether it's ITSM, HR, you pick the, you're going to pick and select what we're training on, and we're going to do it in your environment. So you'll have those recorded demos and then even quick reference cards. Quick reference cards are a great way to really learn and have um, kind of up to the minute or I'm sorry, easy to access um, references of, of your workflows. And I'll show you a sample here. Um, this is actually just a, a, as you can see, kind of a how to do, how to create a case. This is a, a simple uh, whether it's uh, CS, uh, um, how to manage a case, proposing a solution, how to open a dashboard. So these are really focused on this. This is the old, um, and it's done in a PDF. So you have access to these, and typically there are two pages. Back in the old days, we might have printed it up front and back um, and um, had it on our desk. But it's as a PDF, you can always pull it up real quickly on your um, on your screen and then view how to how to do these. Um, one of the really nice things about um, all of this custom process user training is all these training assets are yours and yours to keep, yours to manage. So, as an example, um, 
you can, when you have a new group of uh, fillers or, or help desk that are joining six months after the training, if we did the trainer, trainer, train the trainer approach, you can actually train those groups again, right? So you have the, you have the documents, you have the knowledge, and we're going to enable you to enable your teams. So all of that is available as part of our process user training. And I'm, and so I think that is um, something I definitely wanted to share. Once again, your service now uh, representative, your account executive, and services account executive can help you learn more about this. One of the really nice things also, it's a fixed price. So um, whether you're training 100 people, 600 people, or 1,000, the training costs are the same because it's us creating these training assets for you. And then you can go out and train uh, for your on your teams. I mentioned about it's a fixed cost for the, the process user. Um, for the technical training, the cost is a per person, per student rate for those that are not free. So a class is sold um, as a per student. Uh, and um, that's the way we do those. So if you're training five people, you would buy five classes in a sense. Uh, how do you buy, how do you register? How do you do that? Well, we have a great thing called learning credits. So a learning credit is, a credit is basically the currency of our training, right? So it's an easy way to purchase training. Um, a credit is approximately a dollar. Um, Different companies, like I said, depending on their relationships, they may have a discount. But basically, it's um, one dollar per credit. And as an example, a one of those videos I mentioned, uh, like ServiceNow Administration Fundamentals, they are currently three hundred credits, or approximately three hundred dollars for the on-demand video. If you decided to take the three-day instructor-led course, you could use the same credits. It's about 2,400 credits for that three-day class. So you could kind of see the difference. Um, and based on your budgets, your learning styles, uh, you can decide what makes sense for your organization on um, whether you do want to do instructor-led or on-demand. When it comes to credits, oftentimes companies will buy in a sense, a bucket of credits, right? So they don't have to say, you don't have to pick the classes up front. You can say, as an example, I wanna purchase 30,000 learning credits. Those credits are available to be used on any of our training, whether it is the custom process user training that I just covered or the instruct or the technical training that I mentioned earlier um, and showed those paths with the certification. So you could pay for certifications, exams, as well as courses, all with learning credits. And I think that was the, the main points that we wanted to, to get across. Um, we're always here to help. You can go to our help center as part of Now Learning. You can talk to your account executives, uh, service executives, or anyone within the ServiceNow ecosystem. We are here to help. I'm going to take a look at some more of those questions and see if we can help in the next 15 or so minutes. We're happy to answer. All right, let's see. Um, let's, okay. Um, somebody asked about um, some of the instructor led, right? Instructor led sometimes don't fit into people's agendas. That's why those on demands are great. Um, one person wants to say, what's the criteria for a micro certification or a mainline? So the micro certifications, they are free. Um, they are included, um, they're much shorter. So uh, the mainline certifications are the ones that upon completion of a class, you're eligible to purchase an, a voucher. Uh, and those certifications, they do expire if they are not, if you don't keep them up. So you do want to um, do that. You want to keep those mainline certifications uh, and and do those. Um, there is a when it says is someone asked if there was a there's a lot of questions here about exams. Um, 
People want to know about a cost for the exam. There is no specific cost for the exam, but you have to be current on your your maintenance. So there is a, in a sense, a certification, annual certification fee uh, to keep your certifications, and that does include those other exams. Uh, someone talked about a career path for a trainer. Um, there are certified trainers out there. Um, and so we can, that is something that you can look at. If you enjoy training other people, um, you could become a certified ServiceNow trainer. And um, we'd be happy to talk more in detail about that um, down the road. Um, someone said about quick reference cards for on demand. So that is that is different, right? The quick reference cards were with those process user training, not the technical training. Um, the quick reference cards are to be used by the fulfillers, the help desk, the process users, not necessarily um, for the people doing implementation or development, because the quick reference cards are more the how do I open a case? How do I you know, handle an incident? So those are, um, I also saw a class about, do we have courses in French? We actually do have courses in a wide variety of languages, and I believe French is one of them. Max is over in our European office, so he will definitely confirm, but I believe we do have French courses. Um, we also have right. them. I'm sorry, what? Right. We do have French speaking instructors, yes. Yes, right, particularly in um, Europe, uh, but uh, we do have those. I should mention, that we do on our schedule of instructor-led, um, they are across, across the globe. So if you are in, um, depending on your time zone, we probably have a class that is in your working hours. So you don't have to wake up at 2 a.m. to take a class um, unless you're in the U.S. and you want to take one in London. Um, but for the most part, and I mentioned these classes, are they, they are virtual. So while they have an instructor, um, they are still virtual. We do have some that are in person uh, and you would just have to see that on now learning where those are, are available. But 90% of our classes are virtual, whether instructor led or the on-demand. Um, there was, uh, let's see about some other questions here for process. Yes. so. Um, for process user training, you asked about, did you hear that it can be customized for our implementation? That is 100% correct. That's the, the benefit of that process user training. It's all specific to your implementation. So you're gonna, your, your students will see your screenshots, your, your version of ServiceNow. Um, uh, you, they will see that all in there. Um, is there a certification for business process analyst? So not at this at this time, um, but we do have certification is always growing. Um, and so, but right now the main certifications are for implementers, for developers and for administrators. So those are the three main type, um, but we're always, we're always adding um, more. Let's see. Let's see some of the others. Uh, actually, I think that was most of the questions. Um, actually, somebody did ask for a doc, um, something about, I think, the, the path for the developers. Um, I can go back to show you that if you like, because there was a, another question um, about app and about um, citizen development versus. Uh, versus the other type of development, but we have an amazing product called App Engine for those of you that have seen it. Um, but uh, that we do have the right kind of training depending on the type of development you're doing. Well, that is the basic presentation that we wanted to show. I mean, that, this was, I really enjoyed um, participating and presenting with Max. Max, do you wanna uh, address a, a point or two? Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to me. It's been fun and a pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Perfect, perfect. Well, we are here.
Um, Trisha or anyone else? If there needs to be, um, but I, uh, I definitely appreciate everyone joining. And please reach out to your ServiceNow representative, your account executive, like I said, service account executive specialize in, uh, in training, um, but we really are here to help and are now learning in our help center, you can open up a case um, for specific questions or reach out to anyone at ServiceNow. We are here to help. Hey, thank you so much. Enjoy the afternoon and or morning, depending on where you are. And we will connect soon. Thank you so much.